What's up, sons? It's Blydrag with Savatech once again, and this video is kind of going out to friends and family in the inner circle that keep asking me about how to buy Bitcoin because there's a lot of misconceptions about it and it can be a little bit daunting and confusing. So I want to clear it up. So once again, this is kind of going out to friends and family. It is a basics video and we're going to go over the basics of buying Bitcoin, where you should buy it from, where you shouldn't buy it from, the reasons why, and then how to send that out to a personal wallet and secure it. So starting things off, we're just going to hop on over here and we're going to first talk about the things you shouldn't be using to purchase Bitcoin. So the first one is Robinhood. So a lot of this is coming up because people saw the GameStop stocks and they got the Robinhood app and then everybody went into the Dogecoin thing and now it's kind of filtering into the Bitcoin thing and you can buy Bitcoin or other currencies on Robinhood but the fact is you don't actually really own it and this is how you can tell really easily if you don't actually own real Bitcoin. If the application doesn't allow you to withdraw the coins then you don't actually own it. And so the way cryptocurrency works is it's a public ledger and it records essentially transactions on that ledger. But if you buy on something like Robinhood, you're not actually transacting on the Bitcoin ledger. Therefore, there's no actual input for your purchase on the ledger, meaning you don't have any control over it. You can't actually use it you can't use the bitcoin itself and the only thing you can do is sell it back to robin hood where this is going to be a big problem here coming up in the future is that bitcoin is a limited supply coin or currency so there's only so many bitcoins in existence and there is a cap on the amount that will ever exist meaning that if you keep buying on robin hood and it gets to the point to where there's not enough Bitcoin in existence for them to fulfill those orders. Well, they're just going to have to shut it down and you're going to lose, obviously, that Bitcoin. Now, there is the movement aspect of this, but we'll talk about that in a different video. And that's kind of going, you know, next level where, you know, Wall Street bets and people are talking about basically buying so much Bitcoin or cryptocurrency in something like Robinhood to the point to where Robinhood wouldn't actually be able to purchase all that Bitcoin to fulfill the orders. Now, what they'll probably do essentially is n never actually buy the Bitcoin. We don't know what they're doing. They may have like a master wallet where they basically take your transaction and buy it for themselves and hold it in a single wallet. That's super dangerous too, because as we've seen in the past with a bunch of different exchanges, those master wallets can get hacked and they can lose all their cryptocurrency. And usually that also means that they're not going to pay you out. Okay. So another example of this where not to buy is going to be PayPal. I confirmed this by actually purchasing about $50 worth and as you can see here if I go in I only have the option to buy and sell I can't I can't send my Bitcoin to another wallet so it only exists within the PayPal app now there were also reports of PayPal selling more Bitcoin than they actually own and that's a big problem like we talked about of course with Robinhood so because we can't send the cryptocurrency out we don't actually own it. It was never put on the public ledger that we bought Bitcoin. We're only buying within their ecosystem. So it was never on the public ledger. Therefore, I don't actually own any, I don't actually own $50.22 or whatever of Bitcoin. So then you're going to ask, what are the options where I can actually buy real Bitcoin or cryptocurrency? And that's what we're getting to now. So the idea is if you're going to be purchasing Bitcoin, you want to purchase it through an application or a service that allows you to then send that Bitcoin outside of the application. So the easiest way to do this is going to be with Cash App. So Cash App basically functions in a form of buying Bitcoin where because it's a cash app, it allows you to buy with pretty much every bank in the United States because it's cash app. And then you can convert that to Bitcoin. So it doesn't say, it doesn't go to your bank and say, Hey, I'm purchasing Bitcoin, which in a lot of cases, then the bank will block that 
An example of this is going to be Coinbase, where like essentially if you try to purchase cryptocurrency from Coinbase with a credit card, a lot of credit cards and banks will block that transaction because they don't want you buying cryptocurrency. Cash App gets around this by essentially being Cash App, right? It's basically like PayPal. It's trusted by banks. It allows you to pull that out. It pulls it out as US dollar and then converts it to Bitcoin within the app. So the next part about that is that Cash App allows you to send the Bitcoin outside of the app, meaning that once you send it outside of the app, it will then be on the public ledger that you own that Bitcoin. Here's the key, which can be a little confusing. A lot of people wanna keep it within the app because it's easy to use. But as long as it's within the app, and this is true with most exchanges, if it's in the application, you don't own it. Cash App technically owns it because it's on Cash App's Bitcoin wallet. It's not on uh, an individual wallet. So if you actually want to own it, you need to send it to a private wallet, a personal wallet, which we'll go over here in just a second as well. The second option that I recommend is going to be crypto.com. It's super simple to use. Obviously links for all these will be in the description below, but it's set up as a US bank, which I'm not for banks being involved in crypto, but the fact is to facilitate the transfer in this kind of weird space as it sits right now, you need an application like this that is a registered bank because then you're able to essentially wire transfer money in. Once again, getting around that whole problem of banks blocking you purchasing cryptocurrency. And that's the reason they set up the bank is so that you can do a legitimate wire transfer from your regular bank to their bank. And then they'll allow you to purchase cryptocurrency within the application. Now, crypto.com is going to require you to essentially ver verify your identity. So you will have to submit a picture, all of the information, the same information you would supply if you are essentially start opening a bank account. So that will process will take one to three days. And then once you've done that, you'll be able to send money in and move it around. I use it a lot. Uh, obviously, we talk about it a lot on this channel. It's the easiest way for US residents to get into cryptocurrency a little bit deeper than Cash App. Whereas like Cash App is like just buy Bitcoin, send it out. The great thing is too, crypto.com already has the exchanges in there and you can send any crypto that you buy in there outside. Once again, until you send that crypto outside of the application, even with crypto.com, you don't actually own it because it hasn't been recorded on the ledger, okay? So finally, what are the suggestions for wallets? There are a lot of different ap applications. There are applications you can run on your computer um, and those are okay. They're known as hot wallets. The problem is that if you have that like on your everyday PC, it's then just a lot easier to access for hackers or malicious people or whatever. If you forget to lock your PC or you download a virus or whatever it may be, you risk losing the crypto that's on that PC. So if you are going to go that route, of course, my suggestion would be have like a, a regular, like an old laptop or something like that that you keep your wallets on that you then unplug from the internet and put in the safe when you're not using it to manage your cryptocurrency. But an easier way to really get into this is going to be a hardware wallet. Now, what I recommend here is going to be the Trezor One. There is a competitor called the Ledger, but the Ledger did keep people's information in a database that was leaked. I don't like it if companies keep my, my personal information in a database. Trezor doesn't do that, so I, I lean towards Trezor. However, Trezor has been hacked. They've been able to hack them. But the thing about that is to explain how a hardware wallet works is it's very similar to a YubiKey, which is a multi-factor authentication device that's a hardware, right? A piece of hardware. And the thing about that is, is unless the hacker has access to the hardware, they can't do anything, meaning even though like a Trezor could get hacked, 
they would have to have the Trezor to hack it. So if you have a Trezor and you basically put it in your safe or something along those lines, they aren't going to have access to the hardware device to then hack it. Also, the hack has been resolved with the newer devices and the newer firmware. It's just something to note that that has happened in the past. People figured it out. Obviously, lots of intelligent people working in the crypto space, lots of intelligent people interested in crypto, and those types of people like to learn how to hack devices and software. That's just part of the game here. So I think it's better that it got hacked. They said, you know, how they did it and then Trezor resolved it. But anyways, that's my argument for Trezor versus Ledger. I own one, as you can see here, it says that I ordered one already and that I own one. I do use this and we have a guide on the channel so you can go check out that guide. It's very easy to use. And basically what you would do is after you buy your cryptocurrency in Cash App or crypto.com, you would then set up your Trezor you would get the actual Bitcoin address for the Trezor and you would send it from Cash App or Crypto.com to the Trezor. And at that point, you own that Bitcoin. It's on the public ledger that that Trezor wallet owns that Bitcoin. And at that point, nobody can take it away from you. Robinhood can't be like, whoops, we don't have it anymore. PayPal can't be like, whoops, we don't have it anymore. You own it. It's on the public ledger. Nobody can take that away from you at that point. So that's the basics of buying Bitcoin and more of a, just a very simple overview of how to get into it. We can go over details. If you think there's anything that I need to go over that would help you out to understand it a little bit better, let me know in the comment section below. And I will see you next Tuesday.